Congratulations! Yay! You've decided that you want the live stream, and that is a big decision. You've got yourself your OBS, but there are so many options that you don't know what to do. Stick with me throughout this video. I'm going to help you set up your OBS with the best settings possible, overlays, scenes, sources, everything that you need to start streaming today. My name is Barry Epps, and this is Content Delta. Okay, before we start, we need to download OBS, but not just that, we're also going to add some plugins to get the most out of your OBS install. Trust me, five minutes of extra work right now will save you hundreds of dollars and hours of frustration. First off, we are going to need to download OBS. I've left a link to OBS version 29 in the doobly-doo down below, so go down there, grab it for your operating system and download it. Secondly, we're also going to grab those plugins while we're on the website anyway. The first one is absolutely amazing and it is called Audio Monitor by Exceldro. Click the link in the doobly-doo so you can download it straight from there. And once you've downloaded it, extract it into your OBS folder. What Audio Monitor does is allow you to make submixes so that you can listen to your audio at a different volume than your stream can. Normally, this is a feature you need to buy an Elgato Wave or Stream Deck Plus for, but now you are getting it with a simple plugin. And the second one only works if you are using an NVIDIA RTX card, but they are going to help a lot later, and those are the NVIDIA SDKs. Find the right card category for you and download all of them. This will give you a bunch of extra filters in OBS and extra functionalities that are going to make your life so much easier. Virtual green screens, better noise reduction for your microphone, and way, way more. After you've installed them, it is time to boot up your OBS. You'll be greeted with a little pop-up window called the Auto Setup Wizard, asking you to go through the usual setup. If you've already booted OBS before, then you can find it in the top menu in the Tools and then Auto Config Wizard. This tool allows your OBS to do a few basic tests on your PC and internet connection to make sure all the basic are set up for you. Set to optimize for streaming and set your base canvas to whatever your monitor resolution is. Then link whichever account you are going to use, Twitch or YouTube RTMPS. Then we want to make sure that the hardware encoding tick and estimate bitrate are toggled, and then we let it do its thing. OBS will now check what your CPU is, what graphics card you are using, how fast your internet is, and it will then pick the optimal streaming bitrate for your settings and even set up your encoder, which is what your PC uses to send your stream to Twitch or YouTube so it works for you. Once that's done, the basic setup is complete. You could now just go live, but... We are not basic. This is your ultimate guide, remember? So we are going to go a step further. In the audio mixer, the first thing you are going to want to do is click and set the audio mixer to a vertical layout. This is going to make the footprint much smaller, meaning you can monitor more audio devices with the same amount of space. Then click on the settings button in the control menu. You might think, holy crap, there are a lot of options. But don't you worry, I will show you the important ones right now. First, let's make sure your stream always looks crisp. Head into the output tab and remember two things. Your video bitrate, which is 6000 for me, and your video encoder. If you have an NVIDIA card, then this will most likely be NVENC, otherwise it will be X264. At the top, you now want to switch it to advanced mode. And this is where we are going to take a step up. First, set your video encoder to the encoder we used before, and then set your bitrate to the bitrate we just remembered. Now to improve the quality, we are going to set the keyframe interval to two seconds. This can prevent a bug, which causes your stream to intermittently lose all its quality for a solid 30 seconds to a minute, before going back to normal. Then at the top, you can see a toggle which can save your life when it comes to making content. The Twitch VOD track. Toggle that on and set it to channel two. What this does is that it allows you to choose which audio is played when you are live and which audio is saved in the VOD afterwards. That way you can eliminate alerts, music and sound effects from VODs without it affecting the interactiveness of your live stream. How we do this, we will come back to later in the video. First, we get to make our scenes. Scenes are like the different settings in a play. When you switch scenes, your whole stream look changes. Usually people will want to start with a gaming scene. 
So the first thing we do is rename this scene to gaming. That makes it easy to find later. We can then head to the sources. The sources are where you choose what you want to display on your stream. And the first thing we are going to add is a game capture. Using a game capture is not only good for your PC because it uses fewer resources, it also makes sure that when you play a game, only the game is shown. So when you need to open YouTube or Spotify on the side, no one will see that. If you want people to see these, you need to add a display capture. You can do this as well, but then if you alt tab or anything else, everyone can see what's going on. Then we are going to add the most important thing, you. To add your webcam, add a video capture device, which is what OBS calls cameras because cameras capture video. Now we can resize our camera source any way we want, but here's a tip you can use on any source. If you left click and hold one of the sides and start resizing, you resize the source keeping the aspect ratio. But if you hold Alt and left click, then you can actually crop your video to any size you want. So if you just want to have a vertical cam, that is A-OK. -okay. Now that we have the camera in here, let's add a cam border. If you don't have a cam border yet, then you can check the description below to grab one of Content Delta's first overlay packs, the Voyager pack. They come in five different colors, red, orange, green, purple, or blue, and you can get them right now completely for free. If your cam border is animated like this, then you need to add a media file. Else, you can simply add an image file. However, the setup is practically the same, except for one click. In the media source, simply add your cam border. And if it is animated like this one, then make sure to also toggle the loop tick on. Then all we need to do is click OK. But now I want to put them in the right place. Instead of dragging the camera border and the camera separately, I can select them both, right click and group selected items. Now I can move them as a group and don't have to worry about repositioning them. The last thing we need to set up for the game scene to be complete are your alerts. If you are using stream elements or stream labs, then that is done using a browser source. After you have made your alerts in stream elements, all you need to do is copy the URL and then paste it in there where it says browser source URL. Remember, you need to set your source size to 1920 by 1080 and there you go. Click OK and you are done. We can do the exact same for the intermission scene, but this time with a larger camera and a different overlay. And now we can just switch from one to the other to the first, depending on if we're just chatting to people or if we are playing the game. However, it is a bit boring that it just sort of cuts back and forth. So let's solve that. In the Voyager packs, you can find a file called stinger.mov. And this is a stinger transition. If you look at the scene transition menu and click the plus symbol, then we can add a stinger. Just choose stinger.mov, set the transition point to 750 milliseconds. Lastly, set the audio fade style from fade out to crossfade. If we switch from one to the other scene, look what happens. Looks a lot better, doesn't it? With all your scenes and sources set up, it's time for us to do the most important thing. Get your audio right. Heard it before, audio is 80% of your stream quality. So bad quality audio gets zero viewers. Let's open up the settings menu again into the audio menu and in the global devices, we are going to turn them all off. It will help us get some more control later and allow us to use the audio monitor plugin a lot better. We just scroll down to the advanced menu and in the monitoring section, choose your headset. In my case, that is the G933. What a monitor does is that it allows you to hear your own audio and OBS has made it super easy to set one up. This way you can hear it when alerts go off or when a sound effect is played on your stream. And now we've set that all up, click apply and click OK. One last thing we are going to have to do and that is activating your audio monitor plugin. Go into the docs and click audio monitor. If you don't see this there, then you probably haven't installed it correctly. Just scroll back into the video and follow the instructions easy peasy. First, right click the audio monitor window and toggle on meter output, output slider and active only. The one thing you don't want to mess up midstream is your audio. 
video. One of the things that could mess it up is if you're on your gaming scene, for example, and you adjust your music, but then the moment you switch into intermission, you change to a scene where you didn't change your music and suddenly the music is just blasting your viewers ears off again. We are going to make sure that that doesn't happen by taking all your audio stuff and setting it into a separate scene and then taking that scene to both the gaming scene and the intermission scene. That way, if you change your audio in one scene, it automatically changes it in the other as well. Which means even if you need to change back and forwards multiple times, it keeps the experience for viewers really, really good. And that has to be our first priority as a streamer. So let's make a new scene, which we will call audio. In there, we are going to add your microphone, which OBS calls an audio input source. And we are also going to add your desktop sound which your OBS calls an audio output source. Then in each of these two audio sources, you right click and open the filters and add an audio monitor filter by clicking on the little plus. In the settings, set the device to your headset and you don't need to touch any of the other things. Just click OK and you're ready to go. Now you will see that the audio monitor has two new colored bars, each with a slider on the side. Well, the left slider on each of those bars is what your stream hears, while the right slider is what you hear. So now you can adjust each of those individually without needing to think about anything else. You can add this filter to your game as well, which we set up earlier, and you can do the same thing so you can still hear the footsteps while your viewers don't get deafened. Last thing we need to do is to get the audio to be active in our game and intermission scenes. To do this, I'm going to teach you the number one tip I learned when I started with OBS nested scenes nested scenes allow you to use a scene as if it was a source and it's super simple all you need to do is open up the scene you want to get your audio into and add a source for the source pick a scene and for the scene pick the scene you want to add and there you go now those have been added into this scene we can do the same thing by going into the intermission scene and adding the exact same scene. Which means that now we only need to adjust the audio input and output capture once, and it changes on both of our scenes at the same time. And there you go, you're done. Your OBS is now ready to rock, but there's one thing you are missing to give your viewers the best experience and achieve consistent growth, and that is to set up your microphone filters correctly so you sound super smooth in all your streams and don't chase new viewers away. To learn how to do that, check out the video right here. And as always, stream better, stream smart.